I think most people did see him as a joke. This is a TV star who knew how to work the medium of television. He was the first smash mouth shock jock candidate. Quiet. A lot of Americans like that stuff. He had a resonance, transcended logic. It was emotional. He just said whatever came to his mind. Crude, uh, hypocritical, dishonest. That's already baked into your understanding of who he is. Um, so congratulations, firstly, for doing this. Thank you. It actually feels like the right time to put it out on reflection for us all to look at it and see what happened. What was your impression of Donald Trump before you went on this journey? Um, well, I was just fascinated uh, at how a game show host had become the most powerful person on the planet. Yeah. And if that doesn't deserve some kind of investigation, I honestly don't know what does. So um, then I set about thinking, well, what did he do? What were his skills? What was his luck? How, how did he succeed where Clinton failed? How did this woman who was ready to lead, who spent her entire life in public service, manage to blow what most people as you remember, thought was going to be an easy run to the presidency. Trump can survive the unsurvivable. And we'll raise you four or five Clinton accusers. <laughs> Were you very aware about being impartial or did you want to prove something? Oh, no, no, I, I absolutely wanted to be impartial. Yeah. I had obviously hunches and guesses of my own, but I didn't. I didn't allow that to, to come to the forefront until I, I, I hope not at all, uh, because I wanted those people to speak and I wanted to do a balance piece that would mean whether you love Trump or hate Trump, you could learn something about that election. Can't lie, I would have been tempted to really show the mon monster he is, but I do think you've balanced it very fairly with the people you've interviewed and the way the story was told. A recording of Donald Trump made more than a decade ago has surfaced. It is lewd, it is vulgar, and we caution you, you won't want young children to hear it. Trump, Trump's business card said President of the United States for four years. And, and you know, you, if, if you, even if you really, really can't stand him, I think the problem was a lot of people spent too much time laughing at him and instead of uh, uh, instead of really challenging him and I imagine in many cases not voting go bothering to go and vote because they thought it was so in the bag for Hillary Clinton um, so you know there are all little subsets of people who were to blame or who were uh, in, in a sense responsible for his victory. And Americans are always so much more entertaining than British if he'd made a documentary out here it would have been so boring Americans are just so over the top and flamboyant I just love how they express themselves I know your other half is American and she's obviously a journalist as well did she was she like your go-to person to be like what do you think do you think this is like did you get her point of view on stuff yeah, 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 definitely ask her point of view. To be absolutely honest with you, we don't really spend that much time talking about politics because I'm not one of those people who ever sort of gets into discussions and says, Max, you're wrong. You just don't understand. My approach is different, which is I want you to tell me why you think the way you do about this subject. Even if I don't agree with you, I want to understand what's going on for you to think the following. You have based your documentary around one of the most disruptive people I think the world has seen in the last few years and I think what's interesting in watching the documentary is everybody just labelled him egotistical, want reality star, oh he's a bit stupid and that's so naive and now when, when you look back you think actually he's a very smart cookie and people weren't really paying attention to everything he was doing and Hillary definitely missed a lot of tricks yeah. It's it, like looking at the way you've done it, it just looks black and white. There's not a gray area. It's like, why didn't anyone see this? Yeah. I mean, the, the first time I, I came across Donald Trump was in the spin room after the final, one of the final Republican debates in Miami. And he was, you know, six feet away from me. And what struck me was that he was surrounded by 20 Secret Service agents and none of the other candidates had that level of, of protection. And I just assumed, you know, as an outsider, thinking that was just automatic if you had somehow anything to do with the presidential, um, you know, contest. This would, this would be a given to you. But no, Donald Trump found a way to petition for Secret Service cover a year before the election because he knew that somebody rolling up in 10 cars and outriders and everything else looks like the president. And the person who's waiting in a queue with everyone else doesn't look like the president. It's as simple as that. Um, and so he is cunning. While no, while no great genius, he is cunning and he is slippery. And, he, and, and look at the way he used Twitter 
any time one of his opponents was on the air, he'd tweet something provocative, which would admit, immediately shift the interview, uh, to ask this candidate, who'd come on to talk about themselves and their, what they wanted to do. They, the, the candidate, the, his opponent, was then forced to say, well, what do you think about this thing Donald Trump's just tweeted? And the whole program pivots to that. So, you know, it's very easy, and in my opinion, lazy to say Donald Trump's stupid. I mean, people say this about George W. Bush, but anyone who becomes the most powerful person on the planet probably isn't stupid. I think. As long as we keep responding as an audience, that's how they're going to try to win elections. Has our political framework changed? You can't go back now. The public has changed. Politics has changed. Honestly, are you prepared? Because at some point, I'm sure if he hasn't, he's going to watch this. I mean, it was released yeah. in America last year. Are you are you on Twitter? Because he, oh, no, he, yeah, well, Twitter. well, he's off Twitter now, isn't he? He's been banned. But um, are you aware, are you uh, any concern of any possible comeback you might get on the back of this? I'm absolutely not at all because I don't think we've said anything untoward or unfair or inaccurate. Um, and yet people have asked me versions of that question. You know, do you, do you think they could snap away your green card? Well, of course, now they can't. They're not in government. Trump won't like the title. He'll say he was always wanting to be president. The, the accident is whether or not he started this intending to be president, by the way. Um, my view is that he didn't intend to be president. It was just a bit of fun and it got out of hand. The thing I'm wondering is, do you think he could ever be president again? Because I know he's at the moment in this in this situation. Last week, because I said, oh, you know, he'll probably hint that he's going to, um, you know, he's probably, probably hint that uh, he's going to run again. But... Uh, um, that, but he won't. But the guy said to me, don't be an idiot. That's exactly what happened before. So, um, uh, you know, um, <laughs> I wouldn't, I, I just wouldn't put it past it. I just wouldn't put it past him at all. I really have to say. You have worked with um, our very own prime minister before on campaigns, uh, Mr. Boris Johnson, who I think at the moment, he's damned if he does, he's damned if he doesn't. Whatever he does, people are going to go in on him, but he's doing what he can do, I guess. We're going through a really tough time. I know you're out there now in New York, but I'm sure you've still kept an eye on what's going on at home. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on Boris and like the stress and pressure he's been put under? I bet you're pleased you weren't there having to advise him through this time. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you started by mentioning the haircut and everything else. Um, I mean, look, Boris has one skill in common with Trump, which is seeking attention and being the person everyone's talking about. You know, the, the, the silly haircut is a classic example of that. It's all done for effect as are all these photo opportunities, dressing up as a builder, dressing up as a doctor to be on the front page of the newspaper. Is that really what the prime minister should be doing in the middle of a pandemic? I'm not so sure I would be, I would be encouraging it. James, total pleasure to talk to you and congratulations. Yeah, um, I hope the doc does really, really big things out here. And I hope you get to come home and do some screenings and stuff at some point. Yeah, I do too. See how much fun I had?